That, by the way, is a perfect illustration of the concept of institutional trust. Scott trusts his institution. You're speaking to a group here that has diminished institutional trust because of the way they are treated. So. I would guess that people sitting there have a high level of institutional trust. People sitting out here have a low level of institutional trust. That's important. I'm Tom Kearns. I'm uh, the director of an organization called Environment and Human Rights Advisory. I'm a philosophy professor. I teach bioethics. I teach an environment and human rights course. I sit on some um, uh, institutional review board to review the ethics of uh, human subjects and research like this. And have written a book uh, or two on uh, public health and ethical issues. Um, I have two columns, not suggestions, urgings, two urgings and one question. The first urging is that at least one, hopefully more than one, community representative be involved in every single stage of yeah. this study, from the design of it, to the planning how to carry it out, to implementing it, and to monitoring. That's, that's crucial for one reason, because they have a right to do that. They have a right to be involved. This is a vulnerable population. This is not a money population. This is a vulnerable population. And a, a less empowered population. I know your answer to, well, golly, if the community is going to be involved, then industry wants to be involved too, forestry wants to be involved too. But the power differential between those two is so horrendously huge that that's just a silly argument. A vulnerable, popu vulnerable population has a right to be included in all stages of that. So I would strongly recommend that uh, representatives be involved in all stages for that reason and for the other reason because it will increase um, community uh, buy-in to the results of the study. You're going to be less skeptical, less willing to toss it out if one of our own has been involved. In it. Absolutely. That hasn't happened yet, so uh, there's not a community representative yet. And I spoke to two people during the break, uh, and uh, from EPA, and uh, that said we can't, we're going to do that. No, I don't think I said we weren't. I, I, okay, I just well, said we weren't. Okay, it hasn't been done yet. Let's hope that it. You're wins. absolutely right, and I think kind of back to Lisa's point earlier about yes. kind of a similar topic, that, you know, or a similar yes. suggestion that you know. And you're gonna, right. We, ha we haven't haven't sort of gotten there yet, yeah. but you'll get it's a great back suggestion. From folks, of course. You do that, but that's just heat you're going to have to take because they don't have the same rights that a vulnerable, unmoneyed population has. That's the first urging. The second urging is just um, reflecting what several other people have said and that you also agree to is important is the in an insistence on, on air mm -hmm. monitoring because um, I bet you if you ask for a show of hands in here, how many people think that the chronic exposures are coming from your food? How many of you think it's coming from your water? And how many of you think it's coming from your air? You'd get everybody air, saying air, it's air. air, 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 air. air. Uh, all my environmental work says air is the most risky source of exposure for all sorts of environmental illnesses. Not water. Industry, of course, would prefer that you check food and water, it's easier, it's less expensive, and it's less likely to, it's just, it's just less. So, second urging is that air, as everyone here has suggested, be included in the study. And then the third uh, 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 request is that information along the way, there's going to be information developed along the way, and oftentimes studies, when they're underway, don't like to give out any information about what's happening and what preliminary data they've got and so on. So the request would be that there be an exception made here and that the community be informed all along the way how things are going. Thank you. Thank you Next. Uh, I moved here in the early 70s because uh, I thought it was a pristine environment. It was. I moved from the East Coast. Uh, the, first, the first 
fallacy. I, I've been in reforestation my whole life. Many of you know the most of you do. The first fallacy I'd like to dispel is that you don't need herbicides and pesticides to reforest. Trees have been growing for millions of years, and they will continue to grow. My land was seeded naturally if I see trees laughing. But basically, what I would like to say is that the aerial spraying in this area is more than just poisoning the people. It's terrifying the people. I get calls every time I, they hear a helicopter. What's going on? What's going on? Are they spraying? Are they spraying? This is terrorism to the max. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. other thing that I have to do is... is I think I'm sick, if you think you're sick, if someone thinks they're sick, are they sick? Very simple question, takes a yes or no answer. Absolutely. So we're all sick from it. Well, I can show you Hello. lots of people that are sick of it. And sick of it. And sick of it. sick of the ballot. Hi. My name is Justin Workman. I live on Fish Creek. I know a few of you guys around here. Um, my wife... I, my two children that are 5 and 11, both, all four of us, have these chemicals in us. We just had our well tested, came up with no detectable levels of these chemicals. My question is this, how can we trust the Oregon Department of Agriculture and the Oregon Department of Forestry to put on a fair study for us? They have been fighting us tooth and nail out here. There was an investigation done by that gentleman right there on this gentleman right there, the Oregon Department of Agriculture, and they found that they have no protocol for the people that have been exposed out here. They have no protocol of what to do when someone calls up and complains that they have been poisoned. This same group that has no protocol is now going to create this study for us. You have to see where I'm coming from. We have no trust. We know what's going on. We see it. We've been here. We're doing it. The very people that have been sickened and poisoned have to come up here and fight for this. It's time, fellas. Please, as a father, I have children that are right outside that have these chemicals in them, and it is time to step up. We know where this is coming from. There are six neighbors now that have had their wealth. Had, there are six of us. Their wells have been tested. The wells are clean. All six of us have these chemicals in us. There's some hard proof right there. It's in the air. Please do something. Thank you very much. There's several of you out there that could get other things, and I appreciate it. But it's time to do something. There's children getting sickened. I appreciate your time for being here.